Hey everyone, Xeon over here from Nintendo Life, and today we're here to share with you our review of Bomb Rush Cyberfunk on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this review was originally written by Charlie Wackoltz for NintendoLife.com, but was reworked into this video by me. Bomb Rush Cyberfunk is an immensely conflicting outing that capitalizes on nostalgia by drawing water from the same punk as hell city tap as Jet Set Radio. Sometimes the cup runs over, and other times rusted pipes bleed into the water, poison jamming the experience. Jet Set Radio casts a low poly shadow over any game about street culture or graffiti, cell shaded or not, and Bomb Rush Cyberfunk deserves better than getting labeled as an imitator and getting pawned off in some back alley tourist trap with knockoff Gucci bags and Rolex watches. But despite its efforts to tag its own turf, Bomb Rush ends up retreading old ground and painting over tags left by the Dreamcast Classic. For those of you unaware, Jet Set Radio might just be the Dreamcast game with the biggest cult following. It's an action game all about rollerblading to some sweet beats and leaving your tags all over the streets. Anyone in the US though may know it better as Jet Grind Radio, though later versions, like the one found on Steam today and the Xbox sequel Future, go by the original Japanese title. Jet Set's gone on to influence counterculture and gaming alike thanks to its distinct sense of style and singular understanding of Japanese street culture in the late 90s and early 2000s. Its influence is so pervasive that even Nintendo took a few cues from its immutable style in creating Splatoon. Now aside from PC, the only way to play the original Jet Set on modern platforms is through the soon to shut down Xbox 360 marketplace, and it's never graced a Nintendo platform before either, aside from the GBA demake. So the mere existence of a game like Bomb Rush on Switch is incredibly exciting, as aside from a few minor differences, Jet Set Radio and Bomb Rush Cyberfunk share near identical gameplay loops. You're part of a crew of graffiti artists, or writers, whose goal is to tag the city's various districts with your crew's graffiti, and in doing so, become the ruler of the streets. Spraying your tag involves a series of directional prompts and successfully tagging something might alert the police to your presence. Dealing with the cops is tricky, they're corrupt and trigger happy, and they're eager to take down you and your crew of vandals, and they will use lethal force, so you'll have to knock them down or just outrun them. Bomb Rush introduces a few innovations to the formula, though nothing that truly reinvents the urethane wheel. You're no longer locked to just inline skates. Instead, you're given the choice between BMX bikes, skateboards, classic skates, and can roam around on foot. And aside from a few story moments, you can play as any of the characters in the Bomb Rush crew. Now, the other major innovation here is tagging. Instead of following the game's directional prompts like you would in Jet Set, you're able to decide from a few different directions to press that will result in different images to throw up on the walls of New Amsterdam. Different combinations will result in different paintings, and while you can find new art tucked away in different nooks and crannies within the city, you'll mostly unlock them after defeating rival crew members in various types of competitions designed to show off your skills, street smarts, and speed. In between tagging walls, you'll encounter a number of diversions throughout the game's five sprawling levels, mini challenges that encourage you to high-five a set number of little statues, are scattered around New Amsterdam and provide you with opportunities to unlock secret songs and new outfits for the playable characters. That's where another innovation comes in. When the cops get smart to your paint spraying antics, you can head to a bathroom to change your outfit and lose the heat. Levels are absolutely packed to the brim with miles upon miles of rails to grind on, ensuring that even something as simple as going to the opposite side of a level to complete an objective becomes a game within itself as you get the chance to try and build up the biggest combo you possibly can by jumping from rail to rail, riding on billboards, and pulling off manuals to extend your string of fancy moves. Pulling off a sick combo taps into an unbeatable sense of momentum that deserves praise, but combos rarely 
really feel conclusive or meaningful unless you're in the midst of competing against a CPU to try to get the most points. It's absolutely baffling that the scoring system doesn't track your points in individual battles throughout Bomb Rush's bustling districts. Even a rating after completing a level or chapter would be nice, but players are awarded no such thing on completing a mission or level. And it's impossible to bring up Bomb Rush without also paying respect to its absolutely stellar soundtrack. Hideki Naganuma, the notoriously Family Guy-obsessed composer whose work on Jet Set Radio played a major part in cementing its cult status, makes his triumphant return to making lo-fi beats to skate to, alongside a cipher of other newcomers, including Too Mellow, who previously composed an album inspired by the sounds of Jet Set. It's hard to communicate just how spectacular this soundtrack is, but suffice to say, it's easily one of the best of the year and a worthy contender for one of the best soundtracks of the Switch era. We'll be listening to this for quite some time. Part in parcel with its audio design, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk is an absolute treat to look at. Even on a day one launch edition Switch that's seen scratches, falls, and dozens of moves, Bomb Rush's environments and colors pop off the screen in handheld mode. From the red light district to the bright yellow power plant, each environment boasts its own distinct style and vibe and set of environmental challenges. We spent hours in each level just trying to explore every nook and cranny in the game's sprawling levels. It's just a shame it's so hard to take screenshots while racking up a 90 trick combo. One standout aspect that helps elevate the immaculate vibes of the environment is its graffiti. Each individual piece oozes character with plenty of different styles on display. Artists are even credited individually for their work within the game, which is a rare, refreshing touch. Of course, with such busy environments and the ability to fly through the game's levels with speed comes a few drawbacks and performance issues. For the most part, the game only drops a frame or two, but going from area to area prompts painfully long loading screens. But worse yet, we encountered multiple full-on crashes that lost us some progress and required us to reopen the game, which exacerbated the long loading times. No matter how excellent its soundtrack or sense of momentum may be, there's no shaking the sense that Bomb Rush Cyberfunk is in a race against its own sense of nostalgia. The game rips, but more often than not, it feels like that's because Jet Set Radio ran before it. That's not to say it's bad, but part of what makes Jet Set Radio so fun and unique is its raw originality. Bomb Rush Cyberfunk feels like a sequel in everything but name, for better and for worse. For every banger in its soundtrack, there's a moment of jank or a feeling that this game hasn't left the 2000s. Again, it's still a great time, but it's lacking that lightning in a bottle feel that Jet Set Radio had. And that's totally fine, and for people who missed out on it back then, this will feel much fresher. We here at Nintendo Life give Bomb Rush Cyberfunk on the Nintendo Switch a 7 out of 10. Now if you have an extra minute and want to hear a little bit more about the game, I very thankfully grew up with Jet Grind Radio on the Sega Dreamcast. I eventually got an Xbox and got to play Jet Set Radio Future, and man, those soundtracks! And I've thankfully gotten the chance to play a decent amount of Bomb Rush Cyberfunk 2, so I've got some things I want to spill. So the combat in the Jet Set series has never really been great, and it's not a whole lot better here in Bomb Rush. You can kick your enemies, you can spray paint them, and you can dash into them if you're on your skateboard or your skates or a bike. But it gets repetitive really quick and you're probably just going to want to find a bathroom to change your outfit as fast as you can. The graffiti tagging system can feel pretty intimidating right off the bat, but the more you play, the more you'll start to memorize the different combinations for each different piece of graffiti. And you'll probably find favorite pieces of art that you like to tag more often than others. And it reminds me a lot of memorizing the music in Zelda Ocarina of Time. How many of you can still play Epona's song, or the Song of Storms, or Zelda's Lullaby from memory? There are already a few graffiti tags locked in my head just like that. And if you ever want to go back through the game and lay down new pieces of art over old ones that you've sprayed before, you can do that. Now, as somebody who grew up with Jet Set, the one thing I'm really starting to appreciate here with Bomb Rush is just how much it expands on the overall formula of Jet Set. Now, we do have bikes, we have skateboards, we can run around on our feet, there's a cool boost that you can use mid-air. Spray paint cans are no longer a thing. Now, you always have infinite paint, 
but there are little boost grenade sort of items floating around in the world that you can collect that allow you to boost. And it still gives you that same feeling of collecting the paint cans from Jet Set. I really love how many different elements Team Reptile have been able to take from Jet Set and then sort of reformat in their own game. Dancing, you can do anytime, and you learn new dance moves as you play the game. And then you can actually find checker paneled rugs around the city that you can go dance on, and that's actually how you change your character in the game instead of having to go back to your home base. And the other thing I came to realize while playing this game is that I've only really played in docked mode, but resolution wise, nothing in the background ever, ever looks blurry. It doesn't look like characters are moving at slower frame rates. Even though this game is available on PC and is coming to Xbox, and PlayStation soon, it really looks like the developers put a lot of time and care into the Switch version of this game. I don't feel like I'm playing a compromised version of Bomb Rush. And if you are the kind of person that wants a higher frame rate at the cost of a lower resolution, you can actually unleash the beast in the settings and let the frame rate be free. And I haven't messed around with it too much yet, but I'll toss a bit of gameplay up on screen of it here so you can take a look. So hopefully Charlie and I were able to provide you with some insight into what it's like inside Bomb Rush Cyber Funk, if this game is for you or not. Feel free to let us know in the comments down below if you're going to be picking up this game or if you have already. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this, then why don't you spray paint graffiti all over that subscribe button inside your head. Don't actually do it in real life because that's that's probably your phone screen or your computer screen and someone's going to be really mad if you do that. Maybe it's going to be you. Thank you all so much for watching and thank you again to Charlie for spending a heck of a lot of time with Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there and we will see you all next time. Oh,